I'm David, and I'm a super RA in a USC residence hall. Today, I'm going to talk about conflict. In difficult conversations, people have certain goals they hope to achieve. These goals don't always match up, which can create conflict. I'm tired of living with you. Really? Well, I'm tired of living with you. Well, why don't you move out? I Man, why don't you move out? I hate that you're so messy. <laughs> well, I hate that you always have to yell at me. Difficult conversations are often dealt with using a fight or flight response. Here, residents choose to attack each other instead of collaborate to find a solution. Let's remind the residents of their friendship and to attack the problem, not the person. Whoa, hold on a second. What's going on here? Well, I don't know. I mean, Josephine just leaves her clothes everywhere in this apartment. And this is a shared space. I live here too. Really, Molly? Well, you don't have to yell. She yells at me all the time. But you two are friends, though, aren't you? Well, yeah, I mean, I've been friends with Josephine for years. Yeah, we've known each other since we started college together. So, do you want to stay friends? Yeah, I mean, Josephine's a nice friend. <laughs> oh, thank you. Asking open-ended questions is another important skill to have. It allows people to speak their minds as opposed to answering what you want. And it allows you to understand what they're really feeling. So how do you both want this conversation to end? Well, all I want is for Josephine to be a little cleaner. And I want her to stop yelling at me. Okay, sounds like a good set of goals. Validating what a speaker has to say is very important. It allows people to feel accepted and that you value what they say. The residents' goals don't necessarily conflict. Molly wants a substantive goal, while Josephine wants a relational goal. But with elevated emotions, they can't see that. That's another aspect of difficult conversations. Emotions are elevated. So let's deal with that first. Best way to deal with that is using the three A's to accommodate, acknowledge, and adapt to people's desires and what they're feeling. So Molly, what does Josephine do in the room that you don't like? Well, I mean, she leaves her clothes like everywhere. And it just really, really frustrates me. So you feel like she's disrespecting you? Yeah, I do. Clarifying and restating what a speaker has to say is also very important. It allows you to really understand what they're feeling and what they mean. I can understand that. And Josephine, what's troubling you with your conversations with Molly? <laughs> well, she always yells at me every single time something goes wrong and it just feels like she's just plainly criticizing me. And so, it's... So you feel like you don't like the way she expresses that to you? <laughs> yeah. Okay. It's important to acknowledge that both parties are contributing to the problem. To blame one another just leads in circles and can kill a friendship. So Molly, I understand that you don't like the way that Josephine leaves her clothes all over the floor, but yeah. maybe you could try to speak with her more calmly when you talk to her about it. I mean, I guess I could be a little bit nicer. And you'll find that doing that will motivate her to respect you more and your space will be clean. And Josephine, I, I get that you don't like the way that Molly's speaking with you, but if you could maybe put your clothes under the bed so it won't be in the shared space, she might appreciate that. Yeah, I, I guess. And doing that for her will make her respect you more as well, and you'll have peace in your conversations. Letting residents know how acting a certain way benefits them is one of the best ways to act, get them to behave the way you want them to. People commonly view conflict negatively. Either they have to blame someone else for their problems, or they have to let frustrations manifest within themselves. I'm sorry for being so angry at you about the clothes. I'll try to be a little bit nicer in the future. Oh, thank you. Well, then I will try to put my clothes away under the bed, or maybe I'll even fold them. Thanks. <laughs> You're welcome. All right. Good luck. You know what? I can't focus on this homework anymore. Do you want to just, like, watch Friends on Netflix or something? Awesome! I can order pizza! Yeah, let's do that. Okay, cool. Too frequently, people make decisions based on false perceptions. The best way to resolve this is communication. Communication allows listeners to truly understand each other's perspectives and come to the best possible solution. What happened here? <laughs> okay, well, Jack and I, we both love orange juice. We need a cup before class. So whoever so we made a deal that whoever finishes the orange juice has to go and buy more. Right? So 
I woke up this morning, no orange juice. Huh. So you feel betrayed? Yes. <laughs> this isn't even the first time it's happened. Well, let me talk to you. Active listening requires understanding what a communicator is meaning and feeling, not just the words they're saying. This allows you to truly understand where they're coming from. Active listening also allows you to create a non-judgmental environment so people feel comfortable speaking their minds. Jack, what happened here? Well, Harry and I agreed that whoever finished off the orange juice will replenish it in the refrigerator. But woke up this morning, lo and behold, no orange juice. This has happened one too many times. Huh. They both said the same thing. I wonder what happened. This is not my room. Have you both refused to talk to each other about this, but you just assumed you know what happened? Yeah. See, I don't see why you're not apologizing. It's not like I drank the orange juice. Why aren't you apologizing to me? I didn't drink it either. You both need to realize that it's not each other's fault. Something else must have happened. Okay, well, if it wasn't either one of us, who was it? Was it one of your friends that you brought over? You and I both know I don't have any friends. So it must be one of your theater friends that ate it. One of the major roadblocks to communication is provoking rebuttal. When someone blames a situation on someone else, the other person has a tendency to put it back on them. Another roadblock is interrogation, where someone tries to figure out what someone was doing before so they can prove their innocence or guilt. How can we prevent this problem from happening in the future? Well, why don't we just buy orange juice for ourselves? Why don't we just put the orange juices in a vault? <laughs> <laughs> okay. Alright, guys. Alright. That was pretty funny, right? <laughs> He's gonna watch. What? You always act this way when our David. What are you talking about? I'm going back to When your dad going back? Sometimes, people are very emotional about certain topics. Or, they bring up topics that aren't relevant to the situation at hand. Look. If you move out and stick me with some random roommate, we're not friends anymore. Whoa, that's a pretty serious statement. What's going on here? Sarah's moving out. Sarah claims she can't afford it here anymore, so she's sticking me with some rando, and I have to live with that. I can understand how you feel. Sounds like a tough situation your friend's in, though, huh? Yeah, but she knew how expensive this place was when she moved in. The prices didn't change. So you, I don't know what's wrong. Do you feel like she has other reasons for moving out? I don't know, maybe. So, have you discussed it with her? Not really. Okay. Shall we do that? I, I guess. How are you, Sarah? What's uh, motivating you to move out? Well, I really want to stay since we've been friends for a long time, but my dad just lost his job and I, my financial situ situation has changed, so I can't really afford it. Oh my gosh, I didn't know that. I'm, I'm so sorry. Sorry to hear about that. Yeah. I, I mean, it just seemed personal, um, so I didn't really want to talk about it, but I, I don't want to ditch you. That makes it any better. <laughs> so how do you feel about the situation now, Molly? Well, I feel kind of bad. I mean, like, my dad lost his job, and I understand if you have to move out, but I really don't want to be stuck with some random person. I can ask around and ask my friends if they want to live here. Yeah, I, I like that. Yeah. And we can still be friends and study together and go to the movies. In addressing Molly's need to maintain the friendship, Sarah can now move on to discuss her need to move out and m other options for Molly. So does that work for you? I mean, yeah, I think so, as long as you find someone. Like, if, if you like them, I think I'll like them. And if you can't find anyone else, we can always find a single apartment for you somewhere. Yeah, that could work too. You can see why communication is so important in conflict. 
If people can communicate openly, they can understand each other's perspectives and why they do what they do. So when you find yourself in a conflict situation between people, make sure they can communicate openly and freely. That's it from this Super RA this time. I'll catch you later.